Uh, hello, this is a note about ASCAT wind measurements and how they can be viewed in Google Earth. We've done work recently to make this very simple uh, to view this very important data in several different formats, but right now I want to focus on uh, Google Earth and maybe uh, show one other sample of a different method in a moment. But this is, this is sort of roughly what it looks like. The satellite goes by and measures the wind speed and direction on the surface of the Earth. This is the presentation of these these are European satellites, but this is the American analysis of the data, and that looks like this, and this is a European analysis like this. And we're using, we're using this type of data here for several technical reasons. Okay, and so the background on the whole process of ASCAT wind is at this website, starpath.com slash ASCAT. Starpath.com. I'll put that in the link. And then we have links here to a whole bunch of articles about this and more examples and so on. And then we get down here to the key points we're after is uh, something like this, where we've made these indexes. The, the thing about it, this is obviously the most important wind data for mariners, period, to know the wind speed in the ocean. But it's not used very often, and the, and the reason for that is it's a little bit hard to access. And, uh, and it's hard to know when it's available. And so what we've done is we've made these indices for both the U.S. and for Europe. And this is, we're looking at the U.S. one here. And this tells us for each of these parts of the world, like this area called San Francisco, that we made these names up, by the way, San Francisco. This is a file number that gets buried into the system, which doesn't matter for what we're doing now. That's all incorporated into the system. But when you're getting these files by email, you'll have to know that number and that's we present that in those are articles above and uh, maybe another video but this also shows that this area here area San Francisco will have new data essentially four times a day roughly four times a day and it comes in pairs there'll be two sets of data coming around five o'clock UTC this is the valid time, the valid time, 5 o'clock UTC, uh, 5.35 UTC, plus or minus an hour, and 18.25 plus or minus an hour. So those are the times where there'll be new data there, and that will be the valid time of that that we compare, if we want to compare the actual measurements with a model, uh, with a model forecast. And so... Uh, now, and so that's the way that works. So if you look over here in Bermuda, it's going to be 0135 and 1425 where you have new data, new valid times. Now, it takes two hours. It takes about two hours to process this time. So you would not look here at 0135. You would look at about 0335, 04 o'clock Zulu plus 18 or 19 Zulu to look at the af these, these here. And so that's when you look. These are the valid times. And those, that latency, the delay in getting the data, is about the same as the model. So a GFS model that comes out at, uh, at you know, that's a valid, at, valid at 12 Zulu, you won't get it till 14 or 14.30 or, you know, 1500, depending how you get it. So the latency of the ASCAT data and the model output is about the same. So that's this, and I want to, and we want to show. So here's the thing. Now we to make this easy with uh, with a with a Google Earth, and uh, this is Google Earth on a desktop platform, not the online version. You go online, you download uh, Google Earth desktop, and load it on your machine, Mac or PC. It doesn't matter. Not sure yet on the, on the tablets. We haven't tested that. But these are computers, Mac or PC computer. You put that on there. And actually, these other aspects of Google Earth and weather, they're going to become more and more important because it's not too long before we're going to have high-speed Internet at sea at a reasonable price. But we're looking ahead a little bit here. We also So we have this. And then if you go on down the line, again, this article, this long detail here, explains a lot about the ASCAP. But we're going, we're jumping right to getting the data now. And then we have a comparable European, European set of data. And these files have already been made. Uh, a lot of work. Okay, so here's what you would do to get these for the... Uh, you would use this method, Starpath Google Earth Weather Files. And so you would just click that and then download that to your downloads. Uh, say, okay, save. And that's in your downloads. So you go then. Then you just open that, unzip that. 
And then here's what you're going to see. I just, un I just downloaded it and I unzipped it. And you're going to see these things here. There's a set of instructions. You can read those instructions. But what you do is you basically take, take this and this, and these are bonus, these are some little bonus things. That's a, a marine observations, I'll demo that, and unified service analysis, I'll demo that, demonstrate that. But these are our two main workhorses that we just made, that we created. We create, we, these are not so much we created, we just modified these to make them work um, here. Okay, so you just take all four of those like that and literally just drag and drop it onto Google Earth. So here's a, let's see, Google Earth, something like that. Oh, I've got this stuff all showing here. Just a minute, I was doing a little testing. Let me shut this stuff off for now. Okay, so you just take those and you drag them. Let me just, I don't know how they're gonna do since I already have them loaded. But if you just take one, for example, let me just take one, click here, one. Just, I'm gonna take Europe. And I'm going to drag, uh, here's my Google Earth. And I'm just going to take this Google Earth and put it up here and load it. Ah, so you see, it's going to do that. It's going to drop them into your, into your temporary places like this, into your temporary places. And then after you've done working with them and do what we've done today, then you can just uh, say right click and then say save my place as and move it up into your places, my places. But this one here, that's the ASCAT stuff, and that's Europe, and that's, see, that's the same as up here. So then you move it up there. So that's how you get them, my temporary places. Okay, so I don't need that now. Cancel, cancel. Delete. Well, okay, delete. Yes. All right. So that is, that's how you get the data. That's very quick. You get the data, and you drag them in here, and you only have to do that once. And then you're done. And so then let's go to America, United States, North America. And then I've just clicked this open. And then so one thing you can do first, if you forget or don't have that in view, we've got a little quick view of where our, um, where our, uh, um, how we define these areas. So this area is Baja right here, Baja. So let's look at Baja. There's actually something going on in Baja these days. And so if I take... Take a, oh, let me close that. I know where I am. I'm in Baja. So let me do that. Uh, oh, I wonder if maybe I'm in the wrong. Let me, may, I may have to go down to Acapulco. Uh, where is that storm at the moment? Uh, oh, that storm may be Acapulco. Oh yeah, it's Acapulco. Now we could, what is this? ASCAT B ascending, ASCAT B ascending. I can turn on both of them. You see, this is now, this is really beautiful because you know then exactly how to turn on what areas you want. Let me just take a look down here at which might give us the best picture of that hurricane right now. Um, okay, so let me, well, either one of these look good. But let's go back. Let me go back. Here's an important thing to show. Okay, so this is fine for now, this one. And I'll just shut off this one for now. But let me go back to the index. Where are we? Baja? No, we're Acapulco. Uh, Baja index. Index. Okay, Acapulco. So you see, look what Acapulco says. He says you're going to have good data at 450 and 1710. That's valid times, valid times, uh, plus or minus an hour each. And then uh, it takes two hours to before you would see it. So we're going to, we won't see this one till seven, uh, let's see, 1900. Right now, it's a zoo, it's a Greenwich Mean Time 2132. 2132 now. So we've got these 17, we're seeing the 17 data. So that's going to be the most recent. And it's going to be something around 1700. So let's go back now to the data here and look at it. And you see it's 1730, just like, just like it all says. So there you go, and you can see that. And keep in mind, these are real measurements. Oh, also, when you're doing with Google Earth, you're going to find the N key, N. You can either click this N up here or press N on the keys, N on the keypad. That, that orients this north-south. But look... 
and that's how you turn this on. And you can turn on these ASCAT now any place in the world. But then you also, we loaded this thing for you too. This is, this is the latest unified analysis. Now, when would that be? Okay, that's 18 Zulu. 18 Zulu is the latest analysis. And we're looking here at 1730. Oh, so these are very close. And sure enough, the, mo the, the, uh, well, the numerical model analysis agrees pretty well. But what you're seeing here is the real data. Uh, the real data. And so that's the value of this um, to look at. Okay, let me, let's see, what else I want to do? I've done that, Acapulco drag, recent. Oh, I could compare with the buoy. Let's see if we have any. Let me shut off this analysis. One other thing we added to this bonus package are these buoys. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's not many buoys here. There's a buoy here. What do we get here? Uh, oh, that's just waves. Uh, I mean, why they're high. But what you could do is if I go up here like to the Pacific Northwest, let me go up here, Pacific Northwest, and turn that on. Let me turn on well, just one at a time. Okay, and so what is that? It's 5 o'clock. We don't want the 5 o'clock one. Okay, there's 1,800. That's pretty good. And let's see what we get here on the buoy. So this is a buoy at 1920. Now that's an hour and a half after this satellite. No, wait a minute. When did this satellite go by? This is 1809, 1809, and this buoy here read the wind at, uh, at uh, 1920, about an hour later. But you see, they should be, you know, things don't change that much in an hour. And here it said, the buoy says you had 11.7 uh, knots out of 360. 11.7 out of 360. And these, uh, and that's, you know, this is, these are color coded. It looks like the wind changed a little bit or the ship reports off a little bit. But um, this, uh, this color bar is very handy. Uh, where, where the blue goes to the green is right at 15, where the green goes to the yellow is right at 20 you know, and so forth. So with a little practice, you're really good at reading real wind speeds from this. And then you can then compare, uh, that's just wave height. Here's a ship report, but we don't have a, a ship reports out there. That's reading um, uh, 20 knots of wind at 340. 20 knots at 340. So, so anyway, that's another thing to play with. It's not the main topic at hand. And the, the last thing I wanna do is maybe go over to Europe and show that we've got this also for Europe. It's a lot of work getting all these made simple like this, but we're, uh, it, it's going to be valuable because you can, you can access this stuff at sea, even with Google Earth. You just hook your, you got to just hook your um, computer up to your satellite phone. So let's come over, let's come over here to Europe, uh, Europe over here. And now we'll go to our ASCAT North America, ASCAT Europe. And then we've got our index. Oh, what's going on? Oh, they all came on. How did that happen? I don't know. Oh, I guess I turned them all on at once. That's no good. Okay, here's our index. Oh, the index didn't show up. Let, I'm going to actually pause for a moment and fix that. I don't know why that doesn't show up. I'm going to pause. It should show up. Okay, I'm I'm back. Um, I'm not exactly sure what happened. Well, no, actually, I do. I do. I do, I figured out what happened, but there was there's a link that was not right, and so that link is fixed now. And in the downloads, when you get the downloads, it'll be correct. Uh, so here's those our graphic index for this area in Europe, and again, here's Biscay Bay, um, and it's got data at 10:30 and 21:20. 1030, 2120. And so go, let's go look at Biscay and check one. Uh, let's see what we've got there. Oh, I've got to shut off the index. Uh, we've got that image. That's a, that's that. Okay, what time is that data? That's 10. 10, that's one of the 10 o'clock ones. That's one of the 22 ones. 
like that, and then here's one. Oh, okay, so look at this. There's now, that's interesting. That's a big th a storm. Uh, okay, so there's no data. There can be no data. This, the point is that with these, these images, if you go to those windows during those times, you're going to find typically four new pieces of data uh, each, each time. I mean, if you buy all four of them, four new data every 24 hours. That's sort of what the, what the statistics is. But let's look at this one. And so you see here, um, uh, let me hit the end key again. This is a, there's something going on here over here in the, in the Bay of Biscay in the France and so forth. So what we could do that's actually I think the uniform model actually sticks over there. Okay, so we could turn on yeah okay so look there's a big low up here but the timing what's our timing here this is at 11:23 what's the real time now it's 21 so this is 10 hours old this our ASCAT data is 10 hours old and we're trying to compare it to this uh, unified analysis which was what that was at 18 Zulu so you see that doesn't it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense to compare this forecast model that's shown here which is a basically GFS uh, to this because one's at 18 Zulu and one is at 11:23 Zulu however that and I just want to take one little quick peek into what you can do because we have these files set up two ways one way is you can load them into other navigation programs directly, such as QTVLM. And so if I go then to QTVLM, let me go here. So here I've loaded that exact same image into QTVLM, 11.23. And, but now I can go and load the GFS model, the GFS model uh, for that forecast. And let's see, this is 11.23. Actually, what I should do is just look at the 12 Zulu. That's 12 Zulu. So I did load the 12 Zulu model run with, uh, with the model. And if you see here, now you see pretty good alignment. And you see, in fact, what's going on. So now we're comparing a model forecast. This is all just theoretical model, these wind arrows and isobars. But what we're looking at is within a 20-minute period here. No, it's 40 minutes. Within 40 minutes, and things don't change that much in the ocean, 40 minutes, we're comparing real measurements with what the model says. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You see that these little kinks in the isobar here are marking where a front has gone by. And uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to check that. I'm actually recording. Uh, where a front's, a front's gone by. Here the wind's going this way and the wind's going that way. So there is a front over here. And again, you see it right up here. And then you can play with this and uh, evaluate, evaluate a model forecast using these ASCAT winds. But this is, this is a little different than doing it on Google Earth. If you do it on Google Earth, you're pretty much tied to looking at data that's pr near the scenario optic times because that's the only time you can really conveniently overlay a model forecast onto Google Earth. Okay, I'll stop there and I'll put the various links in the description about where you get stuff.